Hello aviators, how are you today? My name is Magnar Nordahl, I'm a captain and instructor on ATR aircraft. In this video I will explain how we fly a visual pattern. It is very useful even when you are on an IFR flight. Let me explain. When we are learning to fly, being a glider or an aircraft, we learn how to do the landing pattern. Upwind, crosswind, downwind, base leg and final. We do this when we fly touch and goes. And when we are arriving an airport, we can fly the full pattern or join one of the legs and follow the patterns from there. When you do a typewriting course on ATA aircraft or other types of aircraft in the transport category, most of the flight training takes place in a simulator. Then follows a skill test in the simulator, and afterwards the pilots must perform some takeoff and landings in the real aircraft. This is called base training. The number of takeoffs and landings are given in the regulations. EASI requires 4 or 6, depending on the pilot's experience. After completion of the base training, the ATA type rating is entered into the pilot's license. This figure is from the ATA manual and shows a standard visual pattern from takeoff to landing. Normal altitude is 1500 feet above the airport. But of course, you can fly the pattern at other altitudes. It depends on local conditions and regulations. And just a note, the landing pattern is not a circling approach. That is something very different and worth a separate video. We all want to fly as efficient as possible. Not only to save time, but also to reduce the fuel consumption and, consequently, the emissions. When the traffic and weather conditions allow for it, we can utilize the visual pattern and save precious time that otherwise would have been spent on a full instrument approach. The Maldives is a perfect place to fly visual patterns. The MSA, minimum sector altitude, is 1500 feet all over because there are no obstacles higher than 500 feet. And the clouds are always above that altitude, except when it's raining a lot. Some airports do not have instrument approach procedures. In that case, we set up a waypoint at 5 miles final to the runway in use. We descend to 1500 feet, and when we are visual, we can continue VFR. If not, we stay at 1500 feet and wait. In this video, I will show you a visual pattern flown at Cadedo Airport. The runway is 1200 meters long, and the runway designators are 16 and 34. Both runways have RNP approaches. When we are coming from Vale, which is to the north, we can make a straight in approach to runway 16. Since the runway is relatively short, we cannot land with too much tailwind. So when the wind direction is in favor of runway 34 and the weather is not the best or it's dark, we fly the RNP approach to that runway. That makes the flight 22 nautical miles or 3 to 4 minutes longer. But when we have daylight and good weather, we can fly the visual pattern and save time. It is always easier to fly the visual pattern when you have the runway at your side. So when I am flying a visual pattern from the left seat, I fly a left hand pattern. I do not follow the manufacturer's procedure 100% as it requires you to lower the landing gear on downwind above the midpoint of the runway. That means you must add some power to maintain your speed before you start the final descent. So this is how I am doing it. Initially, I'm flying straight towards the airport and descend to 1500 feet at 240 knots. Or less when there is turbulence, of course. When we have the runway in sight, I turn slightly to the right to make sure the downwind is long enough to set up the visual pattern properly.
when the aircraft levels off at 1500 feet, the speed will bleed off by itself. When reaching 170 knots, I adjust power to maintain that speed. When I am about 1 nautical mile from the runway center line, I turn on wind. So how do I know when I am 1 nautical mile from the center line? It's about experience. You determine the angle and relative distance. The easiest method is to ask pilot monitoring to select direct to final T4 on the FMS. Then I can see the deviation from the center line on the navigation display. When we are midfield, I ask for flap 15. This causes the speed to decrease to about 160 knots. When we are abeam the runway threshold, we start timing and select the landing gear down. In zero wind, the timing is the altitude above the airport divided by 30. So at 1500 feet, it is 50 seconds. Then we subtract one second per one knot tailwind component. In this case, we have 10 knots tailwind, so we will turn to base after 40 seconds. On this video, I'm flying an ATR-42, so after the landing gear is down, we select flap 25. Before we start descent, we set ALT SELECT above your altitude, for example 2000 feet. And to start descent, we use VS mode, set to minus 600 feet per minute. When the time is out, we turn to the base leg. And from now on, it's all about visual references to that runway. Autopilot off. We select flap 35 or 30 if you are flying ATR 72. Start a shallow turn to final. Before landing checklist. If we have done everything correct, we should join the final on the puppy. 500. Stabilized at 500 feet. The rest is a normal landing. And that's all for this time. Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day and happy landing.